My guest today is a seer prophet, and she is passionate about equipping believers in how to develop their own supernatural gifts. So please welcome Sarah Jane Bickert. Sarah Jane, hello. Hi Donna, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me here. Well now, it sounds like you're not from around here as far as yes, <laughs> close to us. Tell me, where are you from and what do you do there? So I'm from Scotland in the UK and I am a Sea Prophet in Scotland. I teach, train, equip, I pray, I lead lots of strategic prayer groups in the British Isles and I'm just busy for, for Jesus um, and love what I do that I'm a vocational minister in Scotland, yeah. That's amazing. Tell us right here at the beginning. Now, we've heard of a prophet, you know, and you are a seer prophet by gifting. What, what is the difference? Mm. So when you look at scripture, there's two different types of prophets. One is to see a prophet and one is the prophet that we are used to calling prophet, office of, which is Nabi mm -hmm. in scripture. And so the Nabi prophet is one that has words that bubble up. So that sense of actually the springing forth of words and they would okay. be wordsmiths and they would say things like the spirit of the Lord says, and then out comes the flow of words. And I'm sure people out there will know a prophet and how they yes. operate when they're a Nabi. Yes. A seer prophet is different. A seer prophet is one who sees and engages in the spirit realm. And actually, I think the ancient Hebrew pictorial language helps us with that. Yes. Because that is a tent and a scythe above it, you know, a cutting instrument like they used to use in the field. And those two instruments together, the, the, the tent means the, the veil between heaven and earth. So fundamentally, a seer prophet is one who cuts that veil who opens it up, who allows people to engage, to see, to sense, and to feel what is actually happening in the spirit realm. And so those two streams of revelation, the seeing and the sensing and the words, I believe, are two streams of revelation that God is giving us all, which kind of come together in a big, almost like a lake of prophetic revelation yes. that we can access. But yes. the office of prophets open those two up to all. Now, now the seer gifting that you were just talking about, you said the word all. I, my very next question was going to be, is this a gift that is for the called or for all? Um, I think both. I think uh, both. Both both the called and the all in mm -hmm. the sense of there are those who are specifically called to be prophets and are born into the office of prophet. And then there are those who, like all of you watching, some of you will be office of prophet and some will be just in Christ and all may prophesy, the word of God tells us. And so if all may prophesy and there's different ways that we receive revelation, that is the difference. Some of you, some of you out there will be called to receive revelation Mm -hmm. in the visions, dreams, yes. Yes. seeing in the spirit, and others will just know and just have words. I have a word of knowledge, I have a word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the revelation can come in different ways, but all may prophesy. Yes, Excuse yes, me. so I, I know you, you love this scripture, search me, O Lord. How important mm -hmm. is it to go into seeking these gifts with, with that attitude right up front? Search me, O oh Lord. Mm, yes, yeah, Psalm 139. I love it. You know, <laughs> search me and know me. See if there be any wicked way in me. You know, give me an undivided heart. Another prayer that I love, Psalm 86, 11. Teach me your ways, O oh God, that I may walk in your truth. And that sense of a, a fine tooth comb of searching of Holy mm -hmm. Spirit illumination that we are as is if you will, as illuminated in the light of life of Christ as we can be, as unblocked as we can be, yes. as unhindered as we can be. And so it's almost like a spiritual MRI that we can do on ourselves and we can ask Holy Spirit, come and shine your light on me and show me if there's anything in my heart, anything in my life that might be hindering your work and the work mm -hmm. that you want to do through me. Mm -hmm. So basically you are saying, and you teach, I know you teach this, that we need to be aware. We don't need to just jump into anything that we feel like is of the unseen world. But, but there are some things that, that we need to know, as you say, 
testing the spirits. Absolutely. I mean, First John yeah. 4 says, um, test the spirits. Know that it is of the Lord Jesus Christ, because there are spirits that come in mm -hmm. different forms. We mm -hmm. know that the enemy comes uh, as an angel of light to deceive us. And let me tell you, many people have been deceived yeah. by what they think are angels, yeah. but actually are demons in disguise. And so this gift of discerning of spirits that, that God gives us, the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit that we need to know, 1 Corinthians 12 to 14, I urge you to study that, that you know what you're getting, but know also that we have to test what is actually happening in the spirit so that we are not um, partnering with anything that is counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have developed something. I have told you this before. I am a checklist girl. Mm -hmm. I, I love a checklist. And so a lot of times in our natural everyday life, if, if we need to make sure that we do something, we have a checklist. Or if we need to go to uh, to the doctor, you know, we go to get a mm -hmm. checkup. Mm -hmm. But you have developed this amazing teaching called the spiritual health check, which you say that we should learn about this before engaging in the unseen realm. Yeah, sure. I think a lot of this comes from learning and dealing with freedom deliverance over the years mm -hmm. with people and individuals and actually seeing where uh, we've individually got stuck or corporately even as the body yeah. of Christ. And so there are some things that I would say are basic things that we know help that we need to check. Have I done this? Am I in that place? And so the first one would be, you know, is Jesus Lord of your life? Oh. Have you repented yes. and turned and yes. said, not just I want to follow you, Jesus, but you are Lord of my life and I am submitted to you. James 4 is the second one. I would say, we, we quote this a lot. We were chatting about this earlier. We often say, resist the devil and he will flee. But we forget the most important part, submit to God, resist the devil and he will oh. flee. Oh. And so actually, as you submit, as you submit into his Lordship, as you say, Lord, I'm bowing the knee to you and you are Lord of my life, then we come into mm -hmm. a place of everything else has to be exposed and everything else is then seen and everything else needs to then almost be displaced. And the third one is very much that um, intimacy, developing mm. intimacy, making sure that we prioritize our time with the Lord, knowing who he is, gazing in his face, seeking his face, seeking first his kingdom, watching and feeling and knowing his still small voice so that we recognize when it's not him. And so almost like if I'm spending time with you, we're getting yes. to know each other, yes. right? We're, the more time we spend with each other, the more we get to know each other's voice, the more we get to know each other's ways mm -hmm. and our character. The same with the Lord. The more we spend time with him, the more we know when it is him, but also we know when it isn't him. So yes. Those three things I think I would be key. Yes. Well, we are going to talk about another side of this. You in this spiritual health check, you, you talk about doors. You call them doors. There's a lot of doors in our lives that we need to make sure that they're closed. The, what we've just talked about, we need to make sure that's open in our lives, our relationship with the Lord, our time with the Lord, make sure that all that's clear and open. But you talk about these doors that we need to make sure are closed anytime we want the gifting of seeing into the spirit. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment when we come back. So stay with us right here on something more. And we've got lots more with Sarah Jane Biggert. Call now and get Sarah Jane Biggert's brand new book, Seeing Beyond, How to Make Supernatural Sight Your Daily Reality, plus her three-part audio CD teaching set, Experiencing God's Secret Garden. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9805. Seeing Beyond is your invitation to engage all your spiritual senses. Start seeing past your natural daily reality into your supernatural new norm. You will receive Sarah Jane's book, Seeing Beyond. Through it, you will learn how to access the spirit realm easily, discover the key to supernatural encounters, embrace the assignment of prophetic intercession and spiritual warfare, commune with the Lord and His angelic realm, uncover fresh biblical revelation, defeat the dark side of the invisible realm. You will also receive Sarah Jane's exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Experiencing God's Secret Garden on CD1. 
Sarah Jane invites you to enter into the secret garden with her. Unlock the areas of your life getting in the way of experiencing the fullness of Jesus. On CD2, discover how to face up to the blockages that God is shining a light on, what the garden might look like for different people, and how to cultivate your garden. On CD3, you will understand the fulfillment of a life spent in the secret place of Almighty God. Learn the steps to take to be able to reap the fruits and blessings from your own garden. This is the key to enter the glory, your own secret place with God. Other seers and prophets are calling this brand new book, literally their words, a masterpiece. Don't miss out on getting Sarah Jane Biggert's brand new book, Seeing Beyond, How to Make Supernatural Sight Your Daily Reality, plus her three-part audio CD teaching set, Experiencing God's Secret Garden. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9805. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, PO Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 282. Please specify offer number 9805 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Donna Chavis, and I am here with our very special guest, Sarah Jane Biggert. Sarah Jane, oh, what a topic and what great information. So thank you for that. Let me ask you this question before we dig into what, what you call these doors that we want to make sure are closed. But what type of things are we talking about here as a seer prophet and for people that, that want to learn? How, how do I... How do I develop that? What types of things do, does God show you? So I think we, over the years, have learned and God has shown us different aspects of where there might be doors open that are hindering us, that are maybe causing us to have lenses that we shouldn't have, that distort maybe some of the revelation that we're getting mm -hmm. from the Lord, mm -hmm. or maybe some of the things um, like in relationship where we feel stuck, or in our job situation, or our financial situation, or very practically even our health situation, what might be causing that? And I think over the years we can see a number of things. Some of those are personal to us uh, and the choices that we've made in our yes. lives yes. since coming to Jesus or even after, uh, before coming to Jesus. Mm -hmm. The other one might be family and familial issues that we would call generational issues. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the Bible very much says, and you can look at that in Deuteronomy, where the Lord says, if there's idol worship, there mm -hmm. will be a curse from mm -hmm. the Lord up to the fourth generation. There's a sense of actually something that a partnership in your family line, for example, like Freemasonry, if there's been oh, yes. idol worship yes. of God in Freemasonry, because the God in Freemasonry actually is Lucifer himself when you come to unpack that. If somebody in your family line has been doing that, you could be laboring under a curse of poverty or sickness or something that you didn't know existed until Holy Spirit reveals it to you. We won't always know these things in the natural. Mm -hmm. So we need the illuminating of the Holy Spirit to say, hey, Sarah Jane, Donna, this is an issue in your life. This yes. is an issue either of yes. something that you've partnered with, knowingly or unknowingly. Mm -hmm. When I mean that, I mean you might know it in the natural, you might remember something, or you may not remember. Mm -hmm. You may know something mm -hmm. in your family line, or you may not know that. There may be something in your home, there may be something on the land that you live in, or the mm -hmm. building that you mm -hmm. live in, or even in the workplace. And so I believe that Holy Spirit, once we know what to ask, once we know what to look for, yes. Holy Spirit yes. illuminates this to yes. us and gives us those words of knowledge and wisdom that we need. Well, and again, I go back to what you are always so wonderful about pointing out, saying, Lord, search me, you know, search me, yeah. make sure that I'm in the right place. Mm. So let's talk about some of these, what you call doors that are unhealthy doors that may be blocking us from getting mm. where we want to be with, with God. What about the door of unforgiveness? 
Well, we know from Scripture that that's major. Jesus mm. labors that time and again, doesn't he? You know, don't come to God unless you've forgiven, yeah. you know, uh, because you won't be forgiven. You know, almost that sense of actually we labor under some kind of a curse if we don't release forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We don't get our full mm -hmm. healing. And so there's a real sense of if we're not receiving what we know is ours in Christ, then I would be asking, is there somebody or something that I need to be forgiven for or need to forgive something for? Mm -hmm. I we can often um, be unforgiving towards ourselves. We can often be really hard on ourselves. Yeah. And over the years, I think some of you out there watching even would be feeling that, actually, I feel that I messed up here or I did something I shouldn't have done. And sometimes Holy Spirit just comes and says, friend, be easier on yourself. You're too hard on yourself. And remember, actually, that we're free to be released into mm -hmm. complete forgiveness when we bring it to the Lord. Psalm 103, as far as the East is from the West, God has yes. already forgotten, right, yes. when we bring it to Him. Yes. And so there's that sense of, is there somebody in family, relational, maybe, that you're holding un unwittingly unforgiveness towards? Yes. And some of you might say, well, but you don't know what they did. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the Lord says, I know what they did. You know, it's almost like leave them to me, but just release forgiveness. And if you're struggling with that, I would say, I choose to release forgiveness to them. Help me get there, Lord. I mm. feel I can't do that because I know it's difficult for some people, particularly if there's really heavy stuff like abusive situations yeah. or violence or even in some death, whatever it might be. The Lord knows what it is, but it's how do we get there, take the steps to say, I know I need to forgive, right. help me get there, Lord. Right. Yeah. Something you told me earlier today before even the show when we were mm -hmm. just getting ready, you're sa you said, ask, ask, yeah. Yeah. ask, ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit within you, ask, is there something behind this for me, this unforgiveness? Because I believe that is one that a lot of people may hold mm -hmm and they are just not aware of it. So ask, it's okay to ask, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, I think it's really good to ask. Yes. God says, you know, you're a friend. There is this, you know, we're not slaves, we're mm -hmm. sons, we're friends. Mm -hmm. And so there's that sense of just as you and I are talking, we can talk and say, Lord, I right. feel like something's, uh, getting in the way, what yep. might it be? Yep. Can you show me? I think the one thing I would say is don't go necessarily thinking cerebrally, it could be this, it could be that, you know, and almost writing right. a list from our heads. Rather ask, Holy Spirit, shine your light on what is the issue? Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. there an issue? Mm -hmm. Some things can be more serious. Yeah. You know, there can be things, for example, where we've bought a home. I've, we've dealt with people, for example, who've lived in homes that uh, maybe a violent act has happened oh, or yeah. somebody before yeah. them was into witchcraft who lived in that house or was into occultic stuff. Mm -hmm. And they can feel things opening, like doors to the spirit realm mm -hmm. are open. They might not know that, but they know something's off. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, um, somebody that I know really well um, visited um, mediums in their life oh. and opened a door to what we would call in common culture a poltergeist, a spirit that moved things around, yeah. threw oh. things around the house. They would come in from work, newspapers would be all over the floor, uh, items would be moved mm. like photographs and stuff. And um, you know, there would be that sense of chaos in the house. Now she opened that door by visiting a medium. Yeah. We had somebody who looked after our son when he was a baby mm -hmm. who I didn't know had gone to a medium. We had lights going on and off in our home mm -hmm. and all sorts of things happening. This was very early on as a Christian in my life. And the minister told me, yeah. you can pray a simple prayer. Yeah. And this is for you out there. If you're struggling with something in your home and feeling a presence or something unpleasant in your home, either from previous people being there or maybe you visited a medium or a spiritualist or somebody like that, you can pray this simple prayer. This home is for Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Yes. Holy Spirit, be the only spirit in this house. Ooh. That's a simple but powerful prayer because for me, you know, I pray that when I go into hotel rooms, I pray that, <laughs> you know, good. if I'm in an, in an atmosphere yes. of, ooh, there's something heavy in here, Holy Spirit be the only spirit in this place. Mm. And you feel a shift and that sense of the practice of that really shifts the atmosphere. And so we don't have to labor under these things. If we feel it, ask Holy Spirit to ask, shine His light. Ask. He will always do and give you that wisdom. Yes, yes. Now here's a huge one. I wouldn't think that you have dealt with this that much. You're a good, strong, confident woman that knows who you are in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't think about that, but you talk about the unhealthy door of fear. Mm -hmm. 
That's Absolutely. huge. That's huge. Fear is massive, and fear is massive to people who see and sense in the spirit. Those who are naturally awakened yeah. in that yeah. really struggle with it because of uh, the demonic being very much in your face with it. But as you say, I'm very used to being confident. I was in business, you know, I was a manager, I'm used to talking publicly, all right. of those things. Um, but this one thing, years ago really grabbed me and gripped me almost like literally overnight um, I got up in the night uh, one evening to go to the bathroom and we had a baby at that time and you know you're used to getting up to feed the baby yes. to check on the baby um, and all of a sudden it was almost like a blanket of darkness just hit me in the bedroom my husband's in bed fast asleep and I'm like what is that you know right. almost like the hairs on the back of my neck are on edge you know I'm literally so it was obvious. frozen. It was tangible, it was tangible yes. Yes. in the moment. I went to the bathroom, almost like paralyzed. You know how you, I don't know if anybody's ever felt the fear of heights. You, <laughs> your physical body is mm -hmm. feeling it. I was feeling it. I literally crawled myself on my feet to the, for the bathroom thinking, I'm so afraid. What happened? Where did this come from? And I thought this was kind of a one-off. I ran back to the bed and got under the covers and thought, oh, I hope Ooh, this goes away. Glad that's over, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was bizarre. And then thought, well, that was strange one-off. Yeah. But then the next night it happened again. Fortunately, my husband woke up and he said, hey, what's wrong? Because I was literally standing in the bedroom, frozen, thinking, what am I going to do? And as soon as I said to him, I feel tangible fear, it was almost like my eyes and the spirit opened up. I saw this demon in the corner, this demon of fear, very happy with his work that he'd managed to mm. affect me in such mm -hmm. a way. But it was as soon as I brought it out into the light, didn't keep it hidden. Remember, occult means hidden. Yes. So bringing it into the light, mm -hmm. speaking it out, exposes it right away. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, almost like, why, why are you afraid? Just come here, I'll pray for you. You know, he was like, absolutely, in the name of Jesus, I just pray a breaking off of all fear. Oh, and yeah. just as he did that, it was really easy. It was like, mm. ah, it had gone. But if I had not articulated it, if I had not said it, if I had not brought it out into the light, I believe that I might have struggled with that for longer. Mm. But I'm very aware of people who I train a lot in seeing yeah. in the spirit that yeah. fear is the one thing that the enemy loves to bring in to say, be very afraid. You know, mm -hmm. when you see me, you'll be scared. And actually, we know that in Christ, all authority and all power has been given to us as many anointed ones, yes. as little Christians, yes. as little Christ rather, as Christians, we get to operate in the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we should never need to be afraid exactly. and never be. Exactly. So if I ever feel a little bit nervous, I think, you know, what? What is that? that? That is not of you, God. You did not give me a spirit of fear. Right. I am confident in you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what is going on that I need to be aware of? So nothing better that the enemy would like other than to stop us in our tracks, Amen. to paralyze mm -hmm. us in our calling, our destiny, our journey with the Lord, whatever. Yes. So recognize, expose, and break it off. I just thought that was amazing. Would you take a moment and pray for those that are watching that might be bound in any way by mm -hmm. fear at this time? Absolutely. Yeah. So I just pray for you right now. If you're struggling with fear, nervousness, anxiety, or panic, and those are all related together, Holy Spirit, that you would just come upon each one now. And I think just, just hold out your hands and just say, Lord, I submit to you. I submit to your leading. I submit to your Lordship. And these are, this is the prayer that I would encourage you to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break agreement with any way, known, unknown, seen, unseen, that I have partnered with the spirits of fear, anxiety, or panic. And I choose right now to break agreement yes. with them. And I say, I will not partner with them anymore in Jesus' name. And as you pray that prayer, I agree with you. And I speak to every spirit of anxiety, fear, panic. And I say, you get off those dear ones watching right now in Jesus' name. We unhook you, uh, demons of fear and anxiety. We silence you and we bind your voices and we bind your activity in these people's lives. And Holy Spirit, I pray, infuse them yes. now. Let them be filled with confidence and boldness. And just as the disciples prayed, God, give us boldness and confidence. I release by impartation that hunger for boldness and confidence to you right now to displace any fear or anxiety or panic that remains. In Jesus' name, be free. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that. Let's talk about this one. I, I know these have been some crazy times that we've had in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. A lot of uh, people are spending more time at home or people may be at home in general. One of the doors that that could be unhealthy for us. Sometimes it's things that's going on in our own home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think this is almost like we talked about earlier, doing the spiritual health check of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Search me and know me, O oh God, mm -hmm. is there any wicked way in me that I need to bring before you? This yes. is very much, is there anything in my home that's keeping a door open? The obvious ones would be, maybe somebody's put something on a wall if you're in a rental apartment maybe mm -hmm. there's an image or maybe there's a book or a video as you know we don't know if anybody owns videos video, anymore yes, or dvds yes. or uh, whatever it might be or even items that may have been mm -hmm. brought or given to to somebody in the home that is holding something on it of of the occult so horror movies would mm -hmm. be an obvious one mm -hmm. or um items like we talked about freemasonry or actual witchcraft items that may have been passed down jewelry or clothing or something. Maybe there's something there that, that has been given or sometimes even we've had uh, people who've been given gifts mm -hmm. by unknown people or gifts uh, from a charity shop or something mm -hmm. like that that might be having spirits attached to them because of the wearer. And so sometimes you can ask Holy Spirit, uh, do I pray mm -hmm. through that? Do I bless it? Do I anoint it with oil? And if you will, just cleanse it spiritually. Or is it something that I need yeah. to get rid of? Yeah. Perhaps there's something that's happened in the home. Perhaps the previous owner uh, may be partnered with sexual perversion or something very obviously demonic. Um, and again, you need the illuminating of Holy Spirit because you don't know what anybody did in the home. And yeah. actually, sometimes yeah. it's just a, Lord, I'm sorry for anything that went on in this house that is not of you. And actually, I ask now for a cleansing uh, yes. of this home. Yes. And again, Holy Spirit, Perfect. come and yeah. cleanse this yeah. home of anything yeah. that is not you. I can't tell you how many times we've been asked to go to businesses or even church buildings. Church buildings can be the worst, actually. Homes or anything where demonic spirits have yeah. taken residence yeah. to actually clear them out. But you can do that, just as I was sharing earlier. Yes. This house is for Jesus. Anything yes. else has to go. We've got about a minute left. I want to make okay. sure that you can talk to the, the folks that are watching. Before we leave and just let them know, okay, we've closed the doors, unhealthy doors. We've made sure that we are right with our, within our heart with the Lord yes. and that we're spending time with Him. How do we ask, how do we approach and say, Lord, I want to operate in the unseen world. I want to operate in the unseen realm. I want to see what you want me to see in order to help others. Will you pray for those that are watching now and just tell us how do we do that and just close us in prayer? Absolutely. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a natural, supernatural ability, I believe, to see and sense in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think I would say to you, there is no method on this. So don't go, you know, checklists are helpful, like Donna said, <laughs> but actually don't feel like, did I you know, do the checklist. Ask Holy Spirit, do what you know to do, but then don't beat yourself up. Holy Spirit, I pray right now for peace. I pray right yes. now for just that rest to uh, take each person watching into the way of the Lord. That Psalm 86 way, the way of the Lord that is very much that um, go to for the Lord, go to him, go to his face, go to his area of needing and let him lead you. Let him illuminate. We bless you in that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Sarah and Jane, thank you for being here. And thank you all for joining us again here on Something More. We'll see you next time.